So skipping the first three reviews, but you can go back and do them and check the answers. They're in the PowerPoint. You can pull that down if you want to. But let's go ahead and go over the true-false uh, stuff because that, of course, um, is, is questions about the or, or statements about the kinetic molecular theory. Okay, so let's begin. Gas particles move in waves. True or false? What do we know about our kinetic molecular theory statements and assumptions? False. How do gas particles travel? In what? They're straight lines. They bounce, they go the different direction, they're in straight lines. They do not go in waves like the electrons do or the photons do. Very good. Straight lines, exactly right. Gas particles are so far apart that they do not attract or repel each other. True, there are no forces, whether they're attractive forces or repulsive forces. The main assumption is for the kinetic molecular theory that they just bounce right off, okay? So no attractive, no repulsive forces, the intermolecular forces or uh, the, like the electrons repelling each other kind of forces is really re what we're going with for the repulsive forces. Those uh, do not play a role here. When gas particles collide, they are called elastic collisions. Yes, this one's true. They are perfect elastic collisions. We say no kinetic energy is lost. You know, bounces back, they hit something bounces back with the equal amount of kinetic energy for those particles, whether it's hitting the walls or hitting another particle. Perfectly elastic collisions. Overall kinetic energy is not proportional to the overall temperature. False. This one is false. The definition of temperature is that it is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles. So yes, it is proportional. We're going to go with that one. Gas particles consist of sizes that are small. Yes, they are very small. They're so small that we actually say their individual volume is negligible. So each individual particle, they are so small, happens to be negligible. And we don't really take into account the individual volume of the gas particles. That's one of the main assumptions of the kinetic molecular theory, that they don't have volume in and of themselves. They occupy, you know, the container, so we measure the volume based off of the container size. Very good. All right. Some more stuff on ideal gas law now. PV equals nRT. You can do a lot with that equation. So let's see what we can do here. We already kind of reviewed this. Where we added in the moles, we have the universal gas constant or the ideal gas constant as being part of this equation. However, because we have moles in here and we have um, some other variables in here, it's very easy to, uh, to manipulate this equation to solve for mass, molar mass, or density. So I'm going to show you, this is going to be, we're going to derive these other co uh, equations by substitution. I'm sure you're familiar with substitution, but let's take our regular PV equals NRT equation. And we're looking at this from the mole standpoint. Well, we can figure out the, um, well, the moles, we can do a lot with mass and moles because we know by definition that the moles can be calculated from the molar mass and the mass of the substance. So this is a generalized equation. Moles equal the mass divided by the molar mass. I mean, if you think about it, you know, this would be in grams and the bottom unit would be in grams per mole, like so. It's a basic equation we use to figure out the moles of a substance, the grams divided by, uh, the, mole, the mass divided by the molar mass. Now, since this equals N, equals n here, that means we can put it in for n over here, and we can substitute it in. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we have PV 
equals the mass times the RT over the molar mass. So we've substituted that in. And then it's just a matter of rearranging the variables to figure out and have it equal to molar mass. And basically, I mean, you could do all the steps, but you just flip the molar mass and the volume and the pressure. So it ends up being the molar mass equals MRT over PV. So far, you follow me here with the substitution. Now, what you should notice is a similar arrangement of variables here. We have mass on the top and volume on the bottom. Does anybody remember what mass divided by volume gets you? Density. It does get you density, right? So we have the density equals the mass over the volume. So now we can substitute in for this part of our equation, we can put in the D. So we get the molar mass equals the density times RT over P. Now at any point in time too, if you have to solve for density, you can just rearrange your variables. You know, put that up there and then divide by your RT. So molar mass times the pressure divided by the universal gas constant times the temperature in Kelvin, that will give you your D. So substitution is very important, especially in your higher level science classes. You have to be able to do lots of substitution in uh, physics as well. Lots of equation math in physics. You'll see a lot of this stuff next year. Uh, but this is kind of cool that we can take the ideal gas equation and manipulate it to be able to solve for other measurements. So let's go ahead and use some of these that we just created, work some problems. But if you like, can't, didn't follow my writing, here it all is for you substituted again on the slide. We take the moles equal to mass over the molar mass, substitute that in. Then we can get our mass over our volume where that equals the density. Then we end up with our equation that has density in it. And like I said, you can manipulate that one in order to solve for density which is helpful at certain times. So let's look here, what is the molar mass of a gas? Seven grams, occupies 6.2 liters, 29 degrees Celsius, 101.3 kPa. What is the identity of the gas? So we're gonna be looking for the molar mass. And we want the molar mass equation that has the grams in it, the mass in it, not the density one. And what other thing do we need to do first before we begin? Change temperature. Let's do that. Add your 273 here. And what do we get for that? So what, 302? I don't know, maybe? Okay. Try to do that mental math. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There we go. All right, so we're going to use the molar mass. Molar mass equals MRT over PV. Now you can remember it, like memorize it, or you can derive it. Although for this quiz, you can just have your list of formulas out as well in your notes. It's very helpful. So here we go. Plug in all the variables. We have seven grams. Oh, what is the I? We need to know our R value. Which one should we use here? This is the KPA, so yes, 8.314 is the one we need for our R value here. And then we need our temperature. Good, over our pressure, which is 101.3 KPA, that's standard pressure actually, and our liters like so, and that's gonna give us our molar mass. So let's figure that out. So what do we get for our molar mass here? And we have three digits here, three digits here, three digits here, four digits for our pressure. So let's keep it to three here for our calculation. So 
So what do we get for our molar mass? Anyone? Anyone? 28.0 is correct. Now, let's, oh, I should have wrote them in here, but let's check the, um, yeah, this is liters times kPa divided by moles times Kelvin. Let me show you how these cancel. We have the kPa cancels, of course. We have the liters cancel. And we have the Kelvin cancel. What are you left with? We're left with grams. And this is divided by moles. So that's where we derive and get our grams per mole unit. When it cancels down, we end up getting grams divided by the moles here. Those ones are staying in there. Now we have to identify the identity of the gas. So we need to look at our periodic table and think about the gases up there. We have the noble gases. So we should check those. Those ones are gases at room temperature. Does any of those really match? the lovely 28 grams per mole. No, so now we need to think of the other ones on the periodic table that happen to be diatomic. Because remember, we have four up there that are diatomic gases. Which ones are the possible diatomic gases that we would have? Actually five, sorry, five diatomic possible gases. And yes, their symbols are up there in, in the ones in my room. Those ones are the, the gases at normal conditions. Yes, I'm glad that you got it. So if you think about it, we would look at this 28. We divide it by two, that's gonna give us 14 grams per mole, right? Because if we know it's gotta be one of the diatomic ones, which one's 14? Yes, it's going to be nitrogen and two, because 14 times two gives us the 28. So you can figure out the identity of the gas there. Very good. And correct, good job. All right, next problem, calculate the density of carbon dioxide at 546 Kelvin and 4 ATM. All right, before we begin this, we're looking for density so we can write out the density equation. Yeah, the molar mass, oops, it's supposed to be a D, not an R yet. DRT over P, and then you can, like I said, rearrange it. Molar mass times the pressure equal, oh, divided by the RT will give you the D. So, I usually have the top one memorized and then I just manipulate it. Or you can plug the numbers in and then just solve for D at the end. It really doesn't matter. But what do we need to know here before we begin that we don't have up there in the problem? R. R. We definitely need to identify the R. So what are we going to use for R here? Good. This is an ATM, so we need 0 0.0821. Very good. What else do we need to identify up here that we need to plug into our equation? We do need molar mass. In order to find the molar mass, what do we need also need? No, what do we need to know about carbon dioxide? Well, we need to know the molar mass of carbon dioxide, but how do you figure that out? What do you need to write out first? The what? The, car the formula. Yes, we need the formula. That's what I was going for. The formula there. One carbon, two oxygens. You need to know the formula in order to know how to calculate that molar mass. So this one, you have to do the added extra step of finding the molar mass. So, you know, the carbon is 12.01. The oxygen is 2 times 16, like so. Add all that up. What do we get for our molar mass? 44.01 grams per mole, like so. Definitely need to find that first. Now we're ready to just dump it into the equation, plug and chug. So, 
we get our 44.01 grams per mole times the pressure or ATM over the 0 0.0821 liters times ATM over moles times the Kelvin. And then last but not least, our Kelvin, which was 546K. Now, once again, caring about the units just to see how they cancel. Moles cancel with moles. K cancels with K. ATM cancels with ATM. You should get a unit left over that should measure density, which we do because we have grams divided by liters. So this is going to end up being something grams divided by liters, a mass measurement over a volume measurement. Then all I have to do is calculate now. Based off the measured values, we have three in our temperature. We have three in the pressure, so let's keep three. And what do we get here for our density? Anybody get it yet? That is correct, 3.93 grams per liter. That's our unit. Don't forget your units. Those are kind of important. Never want to forget and leave a naked number without its unit. All righty. Now there's one other added little aspect to Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. So let's take a look at that one and, look at, and, and talk about it. We know we can just add up the partial pressures of the individual gases in the gas mixture and get the total pressure. But there are some other manipulations we can do with Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure. And it involves something called the mole fraction. Mole fraction really basically coming up with like the decimal percentage of the moles out of the entire mixture. So here, this is the mole fraction part. Okay, X to the A means that's going to be the mole fraction of gas A, where the moles of gas A divided by the total moles in the mixture gives you the mole fraction. Once you get the mole fraction of the gas, then all you have to do is take the mole fraction and multiply it by the total and you'll get the partial pressure of the individual gas. So it's kind of manipulating the math a little bit, far, uh, a little bit further in trying to figure out uh, partial pressures in a gas mixture. So let's look at this one. We have the total pressure is 6.36 atm. What is the partial pressure of nitrogen if I put two moles of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen into the container? So we do know the total pressure, we'll, we'll use that later. Yeah, this is p-total. But before we begin, we're given moles of each gas in the mixture. So really, we need to find and we want to know the partial pressure of nitrogen so we need to find the mole fraction of nitrogen first. So that's going to be the moles of nitrogen over the total moles in the mixture. That's pretty simple though, because there's two moles of nitrogen in the mixture. How many moles total in the mixture? Five, so that's pretty easy. So two-fifths happens to be what? 0 0.4, right? And we're only given one significant figure for these guys, a three and a two. So we're gonna leave that at 0.4, like so. Now we can do the you know, partial pressure of nitrogen is going to be the mole fraction of nitrogen times the total pressure. And we're going to be able to figure out the partial pressure of the nitrogen. So 0 
times 6.36. What does that give us? Give me the calculator answer first, please. 2.544. This is the calculator answer. Very good. But because of these, and because of this mole fraction only having one, we only really get to keep one. So do we round up the two or leave it a two? We round this up, right? So we get three ATM as our partial pressure of nitrogen. So that's, those are the basic little added on ones that, you know, make the problems a little bit more complicated. Being able to add mass, molar mass, or density to the um, ideal gas equation. And then here, being able to calculate and find the mole fraction and use that type of equation in order to find the partial pressures in a gas mixture. So a couple little modifications or add-ons to Dalton's law of partial pressure and the ideal gas law. Any questions?